everyone. Welcome to Wild on Design, presented by Women in Luxury Design and the Pacific Design Center. And a special thank you today to Interiors Magazine as our media partner. Well, I am Jennifer Convey. I'm your host and the director of Women in Luxury Design, and I'm super excited about our superstar interior designers. Well, they are as passionate about creating spectacular spectacular interiors as they are about saving iconic architecture, and we're going to learn all about it. Ron Woodson and Jamie Romerfield are principal directors of their award-winning design firm called Woodson and Romerfield's House of Design. They are based right here in Los Angeles, California. They specialize in creating high-style interiors, combining opulence with artful living for their discerning high-profile clientele. They are true California style makers, decorating memorable interiors filled with beauty, provenance, and the comforts of luxury living. Welcome, Ron Woodson and Jamie Rummerfield. Hi, Hi Jennifer. Jennifer. Hi. Thank you so much for making the time to be with us today. This is great. Okay, so I was reading that you guys actually have been published in 150 publications. I think that's every single shelter magazine and so forth. I'm a huge fan of your style. It's always incredibly layered and creative. Um, wow. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, I, instead of reading your wonderful and lengthy, incredible bios, I would love to just have each of you tell us, in your own words, your journey and how you got into interior design. Uh, Ron, let's start with you. Uh, sure. My uh, actually, Jamie's is probably more interesting. Mine is more varied. Um, I started out in corporate life. My first degree is in finance. And through the years, I owned my own company a, a, in a completely different industry, but always had this creative side to me. And um, I was fortunate enough to meet my previous business partner who was in the design business. And I said, this is the path I wanna take. And I then went back to school to uh, UCLA's uh, design program and had my own firm for about four years and then I met Jamie. That's, in, that's fabulous. I also know you come from a creative family though so it wasn't completely um, well numbers finance and design music. Your dad was a jazz musician. Right? Yes he was. Um, yes, I come from a very creative family. Both my dad and grandfather both were uh bass players oh um, how my neat. grandfather how cool. was a symphony player and my dad was a jazz player wow so yeah. the creative gene pool is at work here <laughs> yeah <laughs> clearly yeah. and i'm sure finance the finance background is a great thing to have to be in the design business right yeah i mean it was overall business i mean you know Typically, most businesses, you start and run them pretty much the same way. Um, so it helped in that regard. I do have left and right brain. Um, sometimes I use one side more than the other. Uh, <laughs> but yes, it has come in, in handy. That's fabulous. That, isn't that wonderful? Um, okay, so then you met Jamie. Jamie. Well, Let's I... <laughs> Ron's being super modest, by the way. I mean, his, is. his godfather is Bobby Short, and his father played in such notable jazz quartets and was in films and worked with so many famous musicians that it was quite, quite the time for Ron to growing up in that environment. And I think it really influenced his, his taste level because he would frequent many estates throughout Hollywood and sure. and just was a time that what a time to be alive really here in LA <laughs> so bringing yeah yeah and so um you know both Ron and I are Los Angeles natives and I went to design school at Arizona State University in their mm -hmm. College of Architecture School of Design and have a bachelor of science in design and so I am very big on 
education, design education, academia, and can't get enough of history and information about architecture and design. And that um, is where I started. And I worked in commercial contract, hospitality, design work, but truly loved residential, like just had an affinity for residential work. And this is back, you know, two decades ago now in the 90s. Hard to believe. <laughs> So and, you've been um, working 20 years, both of you. Ron and I have so been, she's only 24. So. I know that's what I'm can't figure out the math on either of you. Okay, go ahead. So yes, Ron and I have been together um almost 18 years as partners. And, wow. and so yes, we we have seen a lot and also and done, a lot. done a lot and have been lucky enough to have some incredible clients and continue to um do what we do and love doing it. And we really are clear about um, the type of projects we enjoy working on and the type of people right. as well. Well, let's back up to how did the partnership happen? How did you guys actually meet? When did all this start? Because you were each designers in your own right at the time you did meet, right? Yes. Yep. Well, before yeah. that, um, that time that younger people think was always there, social media, um, yeah, that's we not didn't have good. social media, no. and but we had colleagues and friends. I had and, a BlackBerry that I would <laughs> text oh somebody gosh. on. I did you too. know, yeah, but I too. <laughs> yeah, and um, they would independently say, "Oh my God, you and Jamie are so much alike," and but we didn't know one another. We weren't able to Google one another. To, <laughs> see who one another was. Um, we just shared a lot, large circle of friends and colleagues. Right. That That's amazing. Yeah. And, and finally, and, yet, I had a, and, then? and then I had a dinner party and I had Jamie and her husband over and, you know, they my were friend at the time. <laughs> right. Right. Nice. Again, we're, we're yeah, our age. And, and uh, <laughs> they were looking around our house and, and, you know, it's it's always sort of undaunting to have another designer in your home um, <laughs> that you don't know. Um, and I'm thinking, oh my God, this lady is critiquing my house and I'm <laughs> trying to make sure everything is right. Um, but two weeks later, she had a dinner party and she had us over and we did the same thing in her house um, because we had some of the very same pieces that we thought wow. Yeah. Clearly, we were the only ones that had full sets of. Um, and so right out the gate, Jamie came over to me and she said, oh, so you see why we were looking around your house. <laughs> and we started talking business right away because we wanted to do this, the same things with um, our careers going forward. Uh, mm -hmm. We love collecting. Um, we're avid collectors of you tell. everything. Do you like to collect everything? <laughs> oh, you name it. As long as it's beautiful. We, we mm -hmm. love collecting from all eras. So um, with that, it just made total sense for us to have a showroom to be able to showcase these items. Yeah. And so you, uh, you have a, you that's have how a it showroom. started. That's exciting. You, you had this amazing showroom um, you don't have it anymore, and that's okay. But let's talk about that period of time because it was a really kind of a groundbreaking, very unique setting that you guys created that um, filled many, um, let's say, work uh, tasks. Could you explain a little bit about this salon, showroom? Yeah. Amazing space that you created. We, um, we decided to merge our design offices this is in the early 2000s, um, and build a shop or storefront that was like a house. And so Ron and I had the design office above. Um, we took a space on La Cienega, right next door to Koi, the restaurant. And the front, we designed it to look like a house. It was an old theater building that had been there since the 30s, maybe. And that whole street actually has a long Hollywood legacy. And so for us, it just felt like home. And we designed the interior like a house. So everything was curated from the art to the lighting, 
the furnishings, the decorative arts, and it was a mix of the old, very high pedigree vintage, which is going back to the collecting. Ron and I love to shop for whether it's a decorative object that has a pedigree or barware that is a complete set. Like we're always hunting for like, not just a piece, but it's like, it has to be a complete set and just <laughs> um, really have a high standard on the decorative pieces of a space and how you fill a room or not fill the room. It's really um, right. about editing. And so we would design the space, each room, it had, we had a dining room, we had a living room, we had a library, we had a bar area, and it, you would walk into this, this showroom and it would just feel like entering someone's amazing house. And we would sell out the rooms as a whole wow. kit, basically. And people, it was just so easy to visualize that way. So it's not like we had a hundred lights in the ceiling. It was the proper chandelier for that installation. Right. And it would just go with um, the sofa, the tables, the lamps, you know, because it all was this kit of parts. Was design studio, salon, showroom, entertaining. Um, and it was built and designed to sell entire rooms. It's brilliant. Really yeah. a brilliant idea. And it was it? fun. We yeah. do oh, miss yeah. it. <laughs> But we realized you have to choose in design, whether you are a furniture designer or a retailer or a design office, and they all are very time intensive. <laughs> and with that, we had two design office locations, one on Sunset Boulevard, one on La Cienega. And it was, it was such a boom time. Um, blogging was just starting. And for some reason, it became our showroom became a destination and so we would have literally like buses drop off at our shop yes. and people like taking pictures and we would also have clients we would just close the doors have client meetings right, right. in the space and um, it was a very well loved and used showroom mixed use space and then at night we would have parties and entertain a lot and I think anyone who's from the neighborhood will remember right. um, spending a lot of time there in the evenings as too, because it was just like being at someone's house. So I understand that everyone knew you, everyone certainly knew about, about you guys or knew you personally, and it was really good for business. That's so brilliant. So do you miss it? And, and what year did you uh, end that? We do miss elements of having the showroom. We closed in 2009. And, um, but at the time when we started, um, we had this great plethora of other showrooms on the street. Downtown was on the street, um, Blackman Cruz, Patrick Dragonette, mm -hmm. uh, and the list goes on. I mean, it went from Melrose all the way up to um, Santa Monica Boulevard. It was just mm -hmm. chock a block full of great showrooms. And from that um, was a great time. And we founded uh, LCDQ. We were the co-founders along with um, several other showrooms on the street. Well, thank you, you guys, for founding LCDQ. That's fantastic. LCDQ meaning La Cienega Design Quarter. It's an event annually that is just fabulous, along with the other neighborhood events we have annually, like the Pacific Design Center, West Week, and Fall Market, of which the two of you also participate currently, we now, always. We participated um, a lot of years in West Week events, spoke on many panels, and I've had great fun with uh, various showrooms. LCDQ um, is a, it was a, it was a board of a group of showrooms. So it wasn't yeah, we said co-founders. Co yeah, we, we um, definitely, it was a group of, um, group of us who really just wanted to get people to the street and to create a block party really. And um, it was super fun how it's evolved and we're really proud of it. And the PDC is a place I think Ron and I have shopped continuously for two decades. Um, as long as we've been in business, we've used the PDC as a resource and it's some, a go-to place every project for us. And we really have cultivated some amazing relationships with vendors and it's, it's just a solid resource to go to. That's fabulous. How wonderful. Um, that's great to hear. 
Um, all right. So moving into, I know there's a natural, there's been a natural progression in your work because of some of the properties, the fantastic historical properties that you design in and for those clientele. Um, how did you come to have a foundation to save iconic architecture? How did this come about? Well, we, you know, working in the field of interior design here in Los Angeles, we get to see a lot of beautiful properties, a lot of interesting clients. And of course, really understand the history of what the city is built on. And Ron and I would come across a job site where it'd be a gorgeous estate. And the client would turn to us and say, we're going to tear it down to build a new spec house or something bigger. <laughs> and Ron and I would look at each other like, this is a tragedy that yet again, another glorious um, property is going to disappear when really we, in our opinion, it was already so good. So mm -hmm. um, there was an instance when we were in Bel Air on a new um, job meeting and we pulled up to this, this is a 1940s kind of classic California estate and a lot of charm to it. And we were like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. And the client came, they were late. We were waiting for them outside of the house. So we really got to study it. <laughs> and, um, and they came in and, and we started talking and we were complimenting them on this structure. And while we were waiting, side note, the neighbor came out because we were waiting in front of this house and they were really friendly. And they said, you know whose house this is? And um, we said, no. And they said, it's Jim Backus's estate. And he recently passed away. And we were like, oh, you're kidding. And we had this great conversation with the neighbor and they were reminiscing about all the, the parties they would have and poker parties and different types of entertaining they would do with the Backus family. And it was just kind of a glorious moment of, oh, what a time, you know, again, <laughs> reminiscing about the history. And sure enough, the client pulls up and like hair on fire, we're walking through the house. They're like, we want to tear down this. We want to, you know, basically replace all of this. And we want to push this back. We want to rip out all the landscape. Mm -hmm. And we were just basically heartbroken. Like, and we just said, no, you can't do, you can't. And clearly we did not agree. And we just, told them we can't work with you good for and, you to stand and, up yeah and, and ron and i were like who can we call like the police can you call like you call? the you know who do you call to really how do you stop this this is mm -hmm. egregious and actually it was just grotesque in our opinion from right. coming as design as experts and so Right. And you're historians and you're such scholarly about everything, art history and architecture. Um, if you would go through the list of things that you've discovered and implemented to stall and help preserve these properties, because you really dove in. Yeah, well, we realized there was nobody to do it. So we said, why not? Why not try? Why don't we establish an organization that can at least be a, a go to for this type of assistance? Right. in preservation work and history and guidance on um, maintaining right. the treasures. Ron, you were going to say something? No, I was going to say, this has been, I mean, Jamie and I both are native Angelinos, and not only are these people um, tearing down these notable homes, but they're systematically tearing our Los Angeles history down and away. Yes, for and, what is the city without its architecture? Right. Landmarks. Right. Historical right. properties. We're, right? we're becoming a city of boxes. And it's like I'm I'm older than Jamie and I remember even in the 70s when sort of these Adobe Spanish style mm -hmm. um you know developments turned up. And I remember my parents saying, Oh my God, in 20 or 30 years, those are going to look horrible. And they were so right, because I look at some of those developments now in you know, some of these suburbs, and they just look like crap. And well, our city is coming <laughs> that way right. with these boxes. These boxes are already dated. The second they're right. built, 
If you would, could you go through, um, just list uh, some of the things that people don't know what, what your organization and what you guys do? I mean, I have here, you can nominate historical uh, landmark nominations. There's legal documentation. Am I right? Um, you know, it buys you time. Um, there's lots of things you guys implement and you personally go to court and meetings, right? We do. Yeah. Um, well, Go we ahead, started, Jay. we, you know, the organization we started was, it's called Save Iconic Architecture. And so we really do focus on notable architecture, cultural importance to the city. And a lot of times people just can't tell the difference, I guess. So we put a spotlight on the buildings that are really important heritage wise to Hollywood and Los Angeles, the, the greater part of Los Angeles, you know, going into Southern California, because you have Palm mm -hmm. Springs, you have Santa Barbara, and we have some of the most notable architecture, world-class architecture in Southern California. When you're talking about the early golden era of Spanish, Wallace Neff, and George Washington Smith, to the case study homes, all the modern pioneers were established in California. And to have such blatant disregard, or maybe just not, not not having knowledge on architecture from our city is um, it's a bit disappointing, but we we feel that we can educate and yes. maybe bring more awareness to that. And that's what our organization does. We we educate and share information about special places that are right next door. Usually people don't even realize that right. are significant from an architectural and cultural standpoint. And you've saved quite a few now. And already. we have saved quite a few. And going through that process, which is the nomination process for landmarking, mm -hmm. um, we've realized and seen a lot of glaring holes in the process with the city that we think can be fixed. And so we're really working on bigger initiatives and building teams that can help make those changes um, in legislation and lobbying and, you know, in the world right. of city and state guidelines. Where can everyone find out more about SIA, Saving Iconic Architecture? You can go to our website, which is siaprojects.org. And it will um, tell you a lot about what we're doing. And we encourage people to join. Um, you can become a member and help us in the fight against um, desecrating our city. Yeah, um, right. It's, um, a, it's a nonprofit, so you know we rely on donations. That's that's the only way we're able to do what we do. And um, we have a full working board that works tirelessly um, to achieve the mission. And but it takes it takes a lot. It does. You, it's such a noble mission. Thank you so much, you guys, for establishing that. Um, I've really never heard of anybody doing this before. So kudos um, and much success. And we'll all participate and do our part. Thank you so much on that. Before we go, I just want to hear about any particular projects or news you'd like to share. What's your favorite client? You know, you guys don't do beige rooms. So what's your favorite client? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I don't know. We, we've had some favorite clients who are repeat clients. Um, and those are always the best because you, you build these relationships. They know you, you know them. Um, and interior design, um, we're in people's houses and know more about them than anyone else, even more so than their families. When you're intimately in someone's home, oh, yeah. um, you know everything about that person. <laughs> and um, so we, but we have currently some great, great clients. Now in the future, there are some, some things I would love to do. Um, there are some- Paul Williams homes that I would love to work on and uh, with a with a with a great client because um, it's it's all in tandem. Um, this could you know, just having a great property. You have to have a great client to work with as well. Yeah. 
Well, it you is. guys have seem to have great clients who let you do what you do, right? We do. And yeah. I think, you know, we have a colorful roster of clientele and that is what we do is a lot of colorful work, but we work with a lot of creative people, music, film, and having clients that are creative in their own right, right, bring a lot of soul and poetry to the design process. And so we're lucky enough to collaborate with a lot of interesting people here in LA. And I think it goes hand in hand with the love for the city. And we end up working with people who do care about their environment. They care about the aesthetics of a city and, and just the way your built environment works for you and the way luxury living is important to them. So we always find a nice fit with That's clients nice. and symbiotic um, same yeah. values. Yeah. And then you're free to flow creatively. That's wonderful that you have creative clients. Well, thank you so much, Ron and Jamie, for giving us all your insights and sharing um, your fabulous mission, saving iconic architecture projects and your interior design work. And so inspiring. What you're doing is just so fantastic. Much continued success to you. I'm sure we'll see you again soon and we'll stay tuned and we'll have you back. Okay? For sure. <laughs> thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank you. And thank you everyone for watching. This is Wild on Design. Special thank you to the Pacific Design Center and Interiors Magazine. We'll see you next time. Thank you.